in my Exhibit D series, we exhaustively discussed the alleged moon rocks supposedly collected by the Apollo astronauts, and we pointed out how those rocks prove nothing. Since then, further developments have occurred, such as the Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft study and the Dutch moon rock that turned out to be fossilised wood. I have also been informed by viewers of various things that I either missed or was not aware of during production of Exhibit D. Things like lunar meteorites different from the Apollo samples and the lunar origin theory of tektites. Also, it seems that Phil Webb has put forth a 17 part video critique of my Exhibit D series, which warrants a response. I shouldn't even bother replying to his series, as it seems the only people watching Webb's videos are the small minority of propagandists within the YouTube community. But I will address his videos because it gives me the opportunity to finally touch on the current affairs and stuff that I have missed. It also gives me the opportunity to be more thorough than I was in my previous video. Not that I needed to be. So I'll be spending most of my time discussing Webb's critique as well as bringing up new information. His first video on this subject discusses water in the moon rocks. Jera rants through nine minutes of Exhibit D, Part 1 and Part 2, building his case that the scientific community has been blind for 40 years to the existence of water in NASA's moon rocks. His parade of scientists, who say there is no water in NASA's moon rocks, include the infamous Red Zero, whose website no longer exists, the apparent moon rock expert and YouTuber, Mr. Craig41, and Jera's favorite three antagonists, Phil Plate, Jay Windley, and Robert Brannig. Then he attempts to prove them all wrong using nothing less than a Space.com article. It is simply false to say that the lunar samples contain no water. On July 9th, 2008, Space.com announced that water has been found conclusively for the first time inside ancient moon samples brought back by Apollo astronauts. The discovery may force scientists to rethink the lunar past and future. The operative word in the Space.com title is samples. Water was found in moon samples. This Space.com article covers a report published in Nature magazine on July 10, 2008. Several other scientific news services also cover this report. Scientific America named their article, Lunar Lava Beads Show Moon Once Harbored Water. Chemical and Engineering News titled their article, Moon Glass Contains Water. Oddly, Jera found a cover on this story with possibly the most ambiguous title, one that did not include the words glass or beads. The Space.com article doesn't make that particular distinction until the second paragraph. These volcanic beads, or spherules, were ejected from the lunar volcanoes as tiny droplets of molten glass that quickly cooled on the outside, forming a smooth eggshell-like container, trapping the water and other goodies on the inside to cool later, while keeping unwanted environmental contaminants out. Such spherules are found in the lunar regolith and range in diameter from 2 micrometers to several millimeters. Since they formed in the low lunar gravity, many of them are perfect spheres, unlike their counterparts on Earth. The first fallacy that Jera uses here is called cherry-picking choosing a statement, or in this case an article title, that is most favorable to his claim. The theme in Webb's video is accusing me of logical fallacies without a shred of evidence. There was no such cherry-picking involved. To be honest, the Space.com article was the first article that I heard on this subject. S. Vector used to run a website, linking people to his videos. And on that site, he would also link to various articles from Space.com. That's where I found the article in question. And I subsequently made note of it for my then upcoming production on the moon rocks. As for lunar spherules being rounder than glass spherules found on Earth, I'm not so sure about that. A picture's worth a thousand words, eh Phil? Interestingly, it seems that the Space.com article is nothing new. 
In February 2001, Dr. Mark Norman of the University of Tasmania had this to say when interviewed for Science at NASA. Lunar samples have almost no water in their crystal structure. There is a huge difference between almost no water and no water. When I first saw this article, it seemed odd to me that the scientific community could have missed the presence of water all these years. And with Dr. Norman's statement long predating this discovery, we have to conclude that NASA and the propagandists have known all these years about the water in the moon rocks, and they intentionally misled the public into believing otherwise. This excerpt is a veritable tsunami of misinformation that contains at least three different logical fallacies. Before we continue with what Webb says, let's note that it conveniently stops the clip from my video just before I provided my proof that NASA and the propagandists have indeed known that there is indeed water in the moon rocks and then falsely alleged otherwise. Here's the continuation of that clip. And with Dr. Norman's statements long predating this discovery, we have to conclude that NASA and the propagandists have known all these years about the water in the moon rocks, and they intentionally misled the public into believing otherwise. Especially Robert Brainig, as he posted a link to this very Science at NASA article, and then still claimed that there was no water in the moon rocks. He also posted a link to Red Zero's site, who states the exact same thing as Dr. Norman, that the moon rocks contain almost no water. Phil Plate also posted a link to Zero's site, meaning that he too told us that there was no water in the rocks when he knew that there was. The astronauts over the course of six missions brought back 800 pounds of rocks and dust from the moon. And this stuff is really uh, weird. I mean, it's, it's clearly not formed on the Earth. You can go through all the scientific analysis and say, yes, this stuff clearly was formed in a low gravity, waterless environment. It has all... Finally, in August 2007, a member from the Bad Astronomy Forums posted a link to a NASA site that stated that there was almost no water in the moon rock's molecular structure. Jay Windley responded, stating, As a matter of raw observation, lunar samples have always shown a barely detectable amount of water. This is not what Windley told us on his website. Instead, he told us the exact opposite, not once, but twice. Lunar soil has no wind or water. Lunar rocks are anhydrous. They contain no water and there is no evidence of the presence of water in their formation. Now, why would Webb not include this section in his video? Watch on. This excerpt is a veritable tsunami of misinformation that contains at least three different logical fallacies. First, inferring that since these volcanic spherules contain water, then all moon rocks must contain water is called a fallacy of composition. The 276 spherules examined by Alberto Sol and his colleagues at Brown University make up only a few grams of the total haul that the Apollo astronauts brought back from the lunar surface. And because of their structure, they are the least permeable of all the samples to water that may have been introduced from terrestrial sources. Although this finding indicates that water may exist, or at one time existed, deep in the lunar interior, you cannot deduce from this article alone that all moon rocks contain measurable water. But it is not just that article I used when referring to the moon rocks containing water. 
I also referred to statements made by Jay Windley and friends in which they acknowledge that moon rocks in general have indeed always contained a barely detectable amount of water. I also refer to Australian geologist Mark Norman, who says that the rocks contain almost no water. Webb even points that out throughout his critique. Ironically enough, in the same video, Webb goes on to post links to other sources that say rocks contain water. Yet he tries to downplay it, as have other propagandists before him. Second, the fact that the scientists had not previously found conclusive evidence of water in these tiny spherules wouldn't have seemed so odd to Jera if he had just read halfway through the Space.com article, because it clearly explains, in plain English, that this discovery was made possible by recent improvements in detection methods. The article states that for the past 40 years, the limit for detecting water in any geological samples was 50 parts per million. Now, with the aid of secondary ion mass spectrometry, they can detect presence of water down to 5 parts per million. That means that nobody over the past 40 years has lied when they've said that there is no measurable water in moon rocks. Oh, haven't they? Then how do you explain this statement made by Jay Windley in August 2007, a year before this Space.com article was published? As a matter of raw observation, moon samples have always shown a barely detectable amount of water. Barely detectable is still measurable. And why did Windley previously not mention this barely detectable amount when he told readers of his site that the moon rocks contain no water at all? I'd say that counts as lying about there being no water in the Apollo samples. As for the Space.com article, I really don't know what kind of gotcha that Webb thinks he's got me on. By no means does this article imply that prior to 2008, scientists had no way to measure measurable water in the Apollo samples, as Webb implies. It simply reads that the lowest content of water that the scientists could previously detect was 50 parts per million, and that the secondary ion mass spectrometry, or SIMS, enabled them to find smaller contents, like the 46 ppm that Sal confirmed to exist in the spherules. 50 ppm is still measurable water, and even if that was the lowest they could find, that doesn't mean that they couldn't detect water in excess of 50 ppm. If prior to the discovery of 46 ppm in the spherules, scientists had detected 50 ppm in the rock samples, I'd say that counts as finding measurable water in the samples, don't you? Really, Webb, was there really any point spending about a minute hyping over this paragraph? It could also be pointed out that the water previously found in the moon rocks was much higher than 50 parts per million.